Go. Good afternoon. We want to um, deal with you on a subject called realization. And simply what realization is, is having the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding to know what is reality, what is truth, what is a fact. To, to understand realization, you must be educated in what truth is. So we preached on the topic Tuesday of, of what is it that you believe. As a Christian, what is it that you believe because it's so important in what you believe as a Christian that, that you may be set free by the truth of the Word of God. Because see, not only is the Word of God a lamp and a light, but also the Word, the word of God is a path of righteousness, is a direction for you to get to the other side. Realizing what you need to be obedient to puts you on a realm of righteousness. And on that realm of righteousness is where the spiritual God exists, where the spirit of Jesus exists, where the Holy Spirit exists. And on the realm of righteousness is where the, the believer occupies to enforce the things of God. So that it might be what Matthew 6 says on earth as it is in heaven. The realization of faith says you must understand what you are pointing your faith as to, to trust in. If you're pointing your faith in something that's blind in understanding, then understand that, that in your understanding that if it's blind, you're going to fall in a ditch. So the real deal is, is this. Realization allows you to understand faith is evidence. Faith sees and accepts the fact as truth. Acting upon the reliability of the fact. We act upon the reliability of the Bible. We act in obedience upon the reliability of the Bible. That's why it's important to understand that Numbers 23, 17 says that God is not a man that he should lie or a man that he should repent. So the real deal is, the realization of the situation, we need to understand the truth. Now I'm going somewhere. Stick with me for a minute. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, in the name of Jesus, first and foremost, Father, let your Holy Spirit fall down, Father, in any spirit that is not up under the authority of you, bring it up under your authority in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask, Lord, that sing your ministry and angels that every household represented up under the sound of my voice, open ears, open hearts, open souls, open minds. Lead God and direct by your logos, frame of word, that we may live by what is written in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go into somewhere called Revelation, the 17th chapter. And in Revelation 17 chapter, we want to bring out several key points that the Christian should have a realization on. In other words, that the Christian should have eyes of understanding on. Now, we're in what we call America, the United States, the great United States of America. And in the United States of America, we have been taught since kindergarten, right on up through elementary school, right on up through high school, right on up through college about the American dream. We have been well trained about the American dream. But according to the Bible, the American dream is tied up in the spirit of the world that Satan uses to blind the mind. Let me explain before I begin to read. Satan begins to blind the mind and when, you, when we go into the Bible, we're going to prove that actually the lust of the eyes to look at temporary things and have a strong desire to have it is like a seducing, intoxicating drug. It's like a seducing, intoxicating drug. So when we go to Revelation 17, we know that the book of Revelation is an unveiling of what it's going to look like before Christ come at the second advent. The book of Revelation is a revealing of what it's going to look like according to Christ's second coming, the second advent. So he, the book of Revelation starts out with a picture of a servant being taken by the Spirit into the day of the Lord. We understand that. <coughs> to write in a book things that must so soon come to pass. And it is about the coming of Jesus Christ the second time. 
So when we get to Revelation 17, it begins to talk about, and I want you to understand, it's talking about the spirit of the world that Satan uses to steal, kill, and destroy, and to devour by seducing and beguiling and putting something on the life of having desires and appetites like sorcery. In other words, when you look at something, it's just not natural to look at it, but it has a strong desire on it for the lust of the eyes and the pride of life just to have it. So when you, when you actually look at the things of the world, Satan is using something what I might call date rape drug on the people that look at different things in the world and they just got to look at it. And I got to have those Jordan, Air Jordans. I got to have... Those 24 rims, I got to have. Even though you can't afford it, you got to have it. And the reason why you got to have it is because the spirit of the world that's in that American dream keeps you always accumulating things, not even needing what you are accumulating, but having a desire and an appetite to have it. It's almost like you are drunk and seduced, and you can't control your own mind. Right there is where I want you at. Right there is where I want you at. So we are talking about the realization of the spirit of the world and what the Bible calls the great whore, the great prostitute. That every king and the merchants of the earth and the people of the earth is drinking the wine of her fornication. Let us begin to read. And it says, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying, Come me, come, saying unto me, Come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Okay, we, we need to get take a look at what that many waters is, so we're going to turn over and look at 1715. And he said unto me, The waters which thou saw it, where the whore sitteth, are people, multitudes, and nations, and tongues. So, we know that this woman that sleeps around with everybody is sitting on nations, people, and tongues, and multitudes. Now, let's see what she's doing. Which whom, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. The word fornication simply means to be intimate with. So, the kings of the earth have been intimate and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication to become, to be seduced, to be beguiled, to become intimate with her. So, let us look at this. <coughs> in Christianity, God has told us, if you seek me in my righteousness, I will add everything that you need. God has said, I shall supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. God has said, if you seek me in my righteousness, I'll add everything that you need. God has said in 2 Peter 1, uh, 3, 4, 5, he said, according to your mind, he said, according to life and godliness, I will give you everything you need according to the wisdom of Jesus Christ. Now, now, let's look at that. We've got millions and millions of Christians going to church saying, I believe. What do you believe? I believe that I'm a sold out Christian. But yet you worry about gas prices, you worry about bread prices, and Luke 21 told you, don't get drunk with the cares of the world. Second Timothy told you, if you fight the good fight of a good soldier, don't get entangled with the cares of the world. And instead of us using God's system, and using what God said to us, 
and believing what God said, we are disbelieving what God said, and we are using the same drunkenness that the world is using. When gas prices go up, our worry goes up. So we are not actually believing what God said, so actually we are being drunken by the curse of the world, but we are not from the earth. We are from heaven. We are born again, redeemed, sanctified, baptized, purified, Christians. So if the gas prices go up, you've never seen the righteous forsaken of begging bread. So why are you worried about a system that Satan is using to blind your mind when God says, I'll take care of the lilies of the field. I take care of the sparrows of the air. They need to toil no what. Why do you worry about another system that you're not even supposed to be concerned about? Why? Because the creator, great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And the power of my tongue lies the power of life and death. If I'm in a situation, faith ain't what you see. Faith is evidence of what you know. Faith is evidence of what you trust. And if you are a born again Christian, faith ain't in the gas system. Faith ain't in what you can do. Faith is in what God is already doing. See what God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit is doing. The Holy Spirit is in you trying to perfect you to teach you the word of God. But instead of you believing the word of God and living by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, which includes that I shall supply all your needs according to my riches and glory, we don't believe what God said, but we stand in a system that is doomed and temporary not having realization to know that that system is going to end with time and that it was never made to be everlasting, but we focus on that system while we're trying to go to church to be in God's system and we don't realize that grace will not work until you understand to have no other God before God. What's that got to do with it, preacher? Here's what it got to do with it. We are so wound up in the American dream that we have been seduced and beguiled to think like that dream. And when we don't have enough in that system, we begin to chew our fingernails off. We begin to wonder what we can do and when we can do it. And God is sitting back and said, Jesus, my son. Did you not tell the church that you delegated authority to that it ain't about what silver and gold can bring them, but it's about what I shall supply to them? Have you not told them, Jesus, that the righteous will never be seen begging bread or forsaken? Jesus, have you not told them that everything that pertains to life and godliness, that through the knowledge of Jesus Christ that we will supply? Jesus, have you not told them that if you will look for me, seek for me and my righteousness, that I add everything you need? Jesus, did you not tell them that if you will seek me and search for me wholeheartedly, that I'll be your God and you will be my people? Jesus, have you not told them this is what they should be believing in? But instead of us believing in the system that God said, who does not lie? who has already perfected our righteous past, who has already given us everything according to life and God in it. Instead of us believing him, when the gas prices go up, we just like the world. We are up and we are down. We are up and we are down, drunken like the world. So this American dream called the Mystery Babylon in 175, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots, and the bomb nations of the earth. We need to get an understanding what these bomb nations of the earth is. Because we need to have an understanding that the bomb nations of the earth is what's causing us to be drunk. And we need to have also have an understanding that this, this, this abomination, this harlot, this spiritual Babylon, this spirit of the world is using Revelation 18, 23. Revelation 18, 23. This Babylon is using not only wine, a fornication that she's given to the inhabitants of the earth to get drunk, chasing riches and desires and appetites that are only temporary. See, everything in God is spiritual, is holy, 
is righteous, and is eternal. But Satan is giving you a world with an end. It's not going to last. And everything you see that is created in this world is temporary. And you are falling in love being seduced by the lust of the eye and the pride of life to have the 24s, to have. Ain't nothing wrong with you having things. But I want you to understand things are not a sign that you are a true Christian. So you spend your lifetime from you start working at 18 and you spend your lifetime hoarding things but never knowing God. Let us look. Revelation 18, 23. And the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom of, uh, uh, and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants, this is why we're here, for thy merchants, where the great men of the earth provide their sorceries, were all nations deceived. By their sorceries was all nations deceived, which means witchcraft, mind manipulation. By their sorceries, and let me tell you how they work. They take a company, get a celebrity to sign off on standing behind that brand, that they are making, and every young boy and every young girl wants to go out and have that name bringing to the point that they got working parents making X amount of dollars an hour, and the sneakers, because the celebrities sound off on it, are $359 a pair, and then here you go, father and mother, Wanting to get that child that desire those, desire those sneakers, that got no idea how much those sneakers cost, got no idea that it's going to take a week's wages or a week and a half wages to get those sneakers. And then the parents thinking of the wants of the child because the child is seduced because my friend got it and my other friend got it. Mama, daddy, I want it. And so not only is this happening to the children, but it's happening to the grown-ups. They're being like Mike. So therefore, when we look, we got a system going on. And so Satan uses the celebrity, the football player, the, the rapper. Satan uses uh, people in official status to sign off on these sneakers that looks just like these sneakers, that go on the foot just like these sneakers, but they cost 359 <coughs> and this pair of sneakers over here cost you 29 but nobody wants that $29 pair of sneakers. They want that 350 That American dream is sorcery. It's mind manipulation, and it is a fad, and it is a mirage. The reason why it is, because I don't care if it's 359 or 29 All you can do with that sneaker is put it on your feet. And then what? And then what? So, then when we look, the sorcery of what Satan used to give your eyes lust to look at and desire his world has a spirit on it that attracts you, that seduces you, that makes you want temporary things above anything you ever saw. And it's like an insanity because you will look at God and put him over on the shelf to Sunday morning and then you might not get him off the coffee table. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word is God. You might not get him off the coffee table to take him to church. Because, see, you're so in up with the world that you ain't got time for God. You are so seduced in this mystery Babylon. And she is a mystery. It's because anybody that don't ha is not educated in what I'm telling you now don't understand the sorcery, the mind manipulation oh, that Satan has on the spirit of the world that he's using to seduce people while time passes to a temporary world and fall in love with that world, having that world, only to realize that everything you get from that system is temporary. It's temporary. It's not going anywhere. When God actually put man and woman into the earth realm to multiply and replenish the earth, we are not doing any of that. But we got to move on. We can't stay right there. 
So when you look, when we back up and look at Revelation 18, and it says in Revelation 18, and it says, I'm going to start reading at 1, and it says, After these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils. Babylon has become the habitation of devils. Why? Because Satan is the god of it. That's why it has become the habitation of devils. Okay? So, and devils and whole and hold of every foul spirit in a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations, listen to that, listen, this is why we're here. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication, been intimate with her, and the merchants of the earth are whites rich, the merchants being the ones that sell the sneakers, the house, the rims, the cars, and, and, and through the abundance of her delights. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sin, and that ye receive not her plagues. Let me stop the explain that. Let me stop the explain that because I need to stop the explain that because simply put, we need to understand him that when he was telling us to come out of her, he understands that you got to work in that system. But you should not sell out to that temporary system and trade that temporary system and all your desires going in that temporary system and shun everlasting. You should have no other God before God and you should never let that temporary system take it and make you so much a part of it that you are putting God out. So then it says, come out of her, which means John is exhorting God's people because John is the author Inspired by God, John is exhorting God's people to shun falling in love and being seduced and drinking the wine of the mystery Babylon. The reason why it says mystery Babylon, because it's a divine secret to everybody that does not have eyes of understanding to hear what God has to say. Now, let's look at that. It says the charms and the snares of this prostitute. The reason why it's called a prostitute because the sneakers are praying you. The rims, the pocketbooks, the eyelashes, the reamy hair. Everything is calling you, come get me. But in order for you to have it, you got to trade time to have monetary value to be able to purchase these things. And so when you get ready to purchase these things, you have got to trade valuable time. You are selling valuable time not to God. You are selling time to the system of mystery Babylon, the American dream. And you are putting God off. And you're not as putting as much time in God as you are putting in the American dream. And you're not desiring God like you desire the American dream. So you are, instead of you shunning the, the spirit that's in the world that's blinding you, you are in bed with it, but you are shunning God. And you are only participating with God maybe twice a month, maybe once a week. But whatever it is, it ain't wholehearted. So the realization that you are not obeying God, you are not abiding in God's word. God's word is not a lamp and a light to your feet. God's word is not directing you on the path of righteousness. Why? Because you're simply not obeying because you don't have a realization to understand that you are chasing something. And the more you get, the more you want. And it's so seductive and it's so seducing. You can't let up because you're trying to get more. But what you're trying to get more of is not of God. You're trying to get more of the world, which is temporary and going to pass away. So once you get it, what do you do? Well, these are some bell bottoms that I bought in 1963. And they back in style now, so I might pull them out. Well, you ain't the size you was in 1963. So, so what did you hold them up in the closet and hang them beside all them other clothes you done bought since 1963? You have not looked, but time have made you wider, thicker, 
and it looked like instead of you growing, you shrunk. So, you're not paying attention to what time is doing to you, and you're trying to stick up with the styles because you drunk from the wine of Babylon. And you were in that American dream just caught up and I can't help myself. I want it. And you were being seduced and manipulated in the mind by Satan and you were proclaiming yourself to be a Christian. And so when gas prices change, when things you see become things you want and they are temporary and you are trade everlasting to go after temporary stuff, you have lost your mind and you are being manipulated. Just look. Go look in your closet right now. And when you go look in your closet right now, tell me about all them clothes you got hanging up that you ain't never even put on your body. You were so seduced, you just wanted them. So you got clothes that you forgot. I didn't even, I forgot, I, I forgot I even had that. So the real deal is, who are you being manipulated by? And what are you believing? Do you believe in an eternal system or do you actually believe in a temporary system? The, 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 you don't have to answer that to me because I'm man. But one day you're going to have to answer it before God. The realization of what I'm trying to tell you is, is that Satan is using the mystery Babylon in our case and in our world is called the American dream. And she is intoxicating and she is seducing to the point that she is the biggest mind manipulator that they've ever been that Satan is using to manipulate the mind. And if you read Luke 10, 19, you will find that the only power Satan can have is the power to deceive. So with the sorcery and the subduction of the world. You need to understand that Satan is manipulating your mind to have plenty of things that are just temporary. This is Pastor Samson. Say we'll see you Sunday.